Over the past few weeks, everybody has been talking about this concept of revival. Because of what's been going on at Asbury, people have been traveling from all over the world to try to have an encounter with God. But the question remains, what exactly is revival? Now, I like Charles Spurgeon's definition of revival, and he says, Revival is to live again, to receive again a life which has almost expired, to rekindle into a flame the vital spark which was nearly extinguished. So I'm gonna define revival in this way. Revival is when we have a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ resulting in a radical change in our commitment, our character, and our conduct. So what I wanna do in this video is I wanna give you five what I would consider dangerous misconceptions about this idea of revival, but then more importantly, towards the end of this video, I'm gonna give you several things that you need to do so that you can actually experience personal revival in your life. Now, before I get into these things, let me just say that I do like and agree with what's going on at Asbury and also the fallout as it relates to other campuses and churches throughout the world. I think it's a great thing whenever people come together and they worship corporately to try to have an experience or a connection with God. But with that being said, once again, I think there's some things that we need to look out for that many people are not talking about, and we're gonna jump into that in this video. Okay, dangerous misconception number one is that revival is not about a place. Revival is more about a person. You know, you have a lot of people who are driving from miles and miles away because they're hoping to have this encounter, this experience, and they feel like there's something magical or mystical going on in this place that they aren't able to experience on their own, whether they're in the confines of their own home or their prayer closet or they're on a walk with the Lord or whatever it may be. Listen, we have to remember that the same God who is showing up and people are experiencing at Asbury or other revivals is the same God that can meet you wherever you are in whatever place or whatever stage in life you may be. You know, listen, the Bible says this. It says, the high and lofty one, that's God, who lives in eternity, the holy one, says this, I live in the high and holy place with those whose spirits are contrite and humble. I restore the crushed spirit of the humble, and here it is, revive the courage of those with repentant hearts. Notice what God says. He says, listen, if you have a humble spirit, a humble heart, and a contrite heart, and that just simply means a heart that is uh, confesses and repents of sin and a heart that has experienced remorse and brokenness over your own sin and holiness, God says, if you have that type of heart, I will revive you no matter where you are. Okay, so the second thing that I wanna say about revival is that I don't believe that revival can be planned. I believe that revival is a move of the Holy Spirit. And this is where I believe that some of our charismatic brothers and sisters just have it wrong, which is this idea that we're gonna have a revival service, right? So we're gonna try to have a service where we manipulate or we do all these different things and we're promising that people are gonna experience a revival. Listen, the concept of revival is largely dependent upon my heart posture as to whether I am ready to receive this experience with God in that particular service. I cannot force, I cannot coerce, I cannot manufacture a revival simply because we have a lot of music and it's a, it's a highly emotional type of service. Listen, revival is something that the Holy Spirit partners with us so that we can experience this encounter with God. Misconception number three is that revival is a one-time experience. Listen, revival is not something that you do or you go to one time and it's like, okay, God, I got revived. I'm good to go, right? No, no, no. We need to consistently be revived. Why? Because revival happens whenever we are feeling distant from God, far from God, stagnant, stale. It feels like we're not connected with God. And that can happen at any point in our Christian walk. It can happen uh, on a regular basis. I might feel revived today, but I might feel far from God next week, right? I might feel close to God right now, but then tomorrow something might happen. Somebody may say something to me and I feel distant from God. So revival is something that we need to be experiencing on a regular basis. I'm reminded of some of the words from one of my favorite hymns, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And it says this, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. 
seal it for thy courts above. And so the bigger question is, how do you know if you need to experience a personal revival in your life? Well, there's several things that I could discuss, but let me give you several of them that you need to look for and identify as signs in your life that may point towards the fact that you need to experience a personal revival. Number one is a decrease in your conviction over sin. If there are things in your life that you used to be convicted about, you used to do these things, it used to look at these websites, you used to do these things with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, it used to use certain type of language or go certain places, and your heart used to be broken and remorseful over those things, but now you're doing those things and you don't even really feel bad about it, that is a sign that you may be drifting away from God. The second sign is a decrease in your time spent with God. There was a point in your life where you were spending time on a regular basis with God and you actually enjoyed it and you felt connected and you felt close to God. But now your Bible sits on your shelf. You don't pray, you don't fast, you don't worship, you don't journal, you don't meditate, you don't do any of the spiritual disciplines. And quite frankly, you don't even miss it anymore because it's not a part of your life that is a sign that you might be drifting away from God. Another sign is that you have lost confidence in the power of prayer. There used to be a time whenever you prayed and actually believed that God was gonna respond to your prayer, God was gonna answer your prayer. But now, you know what, you don't even pray because maybe some things have happened in your life and you've given up on the power of prayer. I always say this, how do you know you've given up on the power of prayer? When you don't pray that often, right? Because if you truly believe that there was a God in heaven who exists to answer your prayers, assuming that they are in his perfect will, then why would we not pray even more? A fourth sign is a decrease in our fellowship with other believers. There used to be a time whenever you look forward to going to church, you look forward to having fellowship with other brothers or sisters in the faith, but now you don't look forward to those things, you don't look forward to church, and it feels more like a burden than a blessing. And then finally, there's a decrease in your spiritual joy or your fervor. You used to be excited, you used to have peace, you used to have this joy of the Lord that exuded from you, but now you're weighed down with anxiety, depression, and discouragement, and all of that as a result of you feeling far from God. So the fourth thing that I wanna say about revival is that revival must accompany reformation or repentance. Listen, if all I'm doing is going to a church service and I'm having some sort of emotional encounter with God where I'm uh, singing, I'm worshiping, I'm laying prostate before the Lord, I'm doing all these different things in worship, but then I leave that service and I literally go back to my same exact lifestyle and nothing has changed, I haven't reformed, I haven't repented. Listen, that's not revival. That just means I had some emotional encounter with God in that moment. I could have that at a concert, right? I could have that as I'm listening to worship music driving down the street. The way you know that revival has taken place is that something happened in that person's life or those people's lives that resulted in a change of behavior. Listen, this is why Joel says in chapter two, that is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Now, what does he mean by this? In those days, a outward sign that you were repentant of your sin is that you would tear your garments or you would rend your garments. And Joel is saying, hey, don't just do what's on the outside to show that you're repentant. Make sure that just like you would tear your garments, Make sure your hearts are torn over your sin. And then it says, return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. Listen, Elisa Childers, my friend, did a great video on this idea of revival. I'll try to put a link below so you can check that out. But one of the points that she made in her video was that, listen, we don't know if what was going on at Asbury truly is a revival yet at all. Because at the end of the day, we won't know until a year or two years or five years or 10 years from now when we look back and we're able to see, okay, wow, these people's lives are one way and then they experienced this revival that was going around the clock 24 hours and several days in a row and then their lives are radically changed and they have continued to walk in a different way as a result of going to that revival. It is then and only then we'll be able to look back and say, okay, wow, something special must have happened here. But if they're going out and living the exact same way and there's no real reformation, then how can we know for sure if they've experienced revival or not? And the fifth thing that I wanna say about revival before I talk to you about some ways that you can experience revival in your life 
is that revival is really a partnership with God. You know, oftentimes we treat revival like faith. We say, okay, God, I'm praying for a revival. I'm praying for you to do a revival in my life. I'm praying for you to help me get a spouse. I'm praying for you to help me get out of debt. I'm praying for you to uh, help me, I don't know, uh, buy this new house or get this new promotion or whatever it is. And sometimes, guys, our faith is this idea that God must do everything and I'm just a passive participant and I don't have to do anything. Listen, the idea of revival is we are partnering with God who is always available to revive our hearts, but we have to do our part. James chapter four says this. He says, come close to God. He's saying, you come close to God because God has not moved, but uh, symbolically it says, and God will what? Come close to you. You will sense the nearness of God when you take a step towards God. Step number one, wash your hands. In other words, get all the sin out of your life so that your heart is ready to receive whatever God wants to do in your life. Number three, purify your hearts. In other words, make sure that your heart is in the right place and you have the right desires. And then it says, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. If there's any sort of worldly activity in your life, you need to get rid of those things so that you can put yourself in the place where you can ultimately hear from God and experience the transformation that God wants you to receive. You do those things, and now you're partnering with God as it relates to your own personal revival. So at the beginning of this video, I told you there's some things that you can do to hopefully experience a personal revival in your life if you're feeling kind of dry and disconnected from God. But let me just first of all say that I have been there, all right? I know exactly where you are. I have been through seasons in my life where I did not want to read my Bible. I did not want to pray. I did not want to fast. I did not want to worship. I did not want to go to church at all. Listen, I have been through those dark seasons, but I have come out on the other side. And let me tell you exactly how I did that. So there's a great book. I encourage you to grab it. It's called Good to Great in God's Eyes. It's by a guy by the name of Chip Ingram. And in this book, he talks about 10 practices that great Christians have in common. And I just want to highlight a few of them so that it will really help you as it relates to experience and personal revival. The first thing he talks about here is to enjoy great moments. And guys, I'm just going to be honest with you. One of the things that has literally turned my entire spiritual life around is that just about four to five days a week, I go on a walk around my neighborhood for one hour. Yes, one hour. The first hour of my day, I dedicate to the Lord every day that I can, as long as it's nice outside. And what I'll do is I will first start off and I'll listen to my daily audio Bible so I can get my devotion in. And then I spend some time kind of meditating on what I read. And then I spend some time praying as I'm enjoying and experiencing God in nature, as I'm just breathing in the air and walking around, getting my exercise in. And then I put my worship music on. And man, by the time I've spent my first hour of the day with God, I'm ready to go. My spirit is revived. Why? Because I have enjoyed a great moment. So I encourage you to incorporate a one hour a day walk around your neighborhood or on the treadmill so that you can experience personal revival. The second thing that he talks about here, if you want to experience personal revival, is to pray great prayers. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time that you prayed a prayer that you knew that if God did not answer it, it would not get answered, right? Sometimes we pray these small prayers, but how great would it be and how much greater would it be if you experienced an answer to your prayer that would enable you to experience revival because you'll be thinking, wow, there is a God up in heaven who cares about me, who wants to answer my prayer. And just knowing that God has answered a prayer that you prayed is a great way to experience personal revival. The third thing you need to do if you're going to experience revival is to enjoy great people, right? Fellowship with great people because sometimes whenever you're down and you're discouraged, you need other people to lift you up and speak life into you and encourage you. Sometimes whenever I'm doing, uh, just going through a difficult time, I'll get with some of my friends. I got a friend of mine, uh, his name is Marvin. I play chess with him all the time. And sometimes it's about the chess, but most of the time it's about us having 
connection with each other, spurring one another on to holiness, uh, iron sharpening iron, talking about our role as a father, as a husband, just as a Christian. And sometimes I leave those times when we play chess together just feeling revived because I've been in the presence of another man of faith. So I encourage you to do that on a regular basis. And the fourth and final thing is to read or enjoy great books. Sometimes when you're feeling disconnected from God, you can pick up a great spiritual book, a great Christian book, and you can start to get ideas. You can start seeing the scriptures in those books. And then you can say, okay, wow, let me go to the word of God. Let me see how I can incorporate this into my life. And it literally changes your perspective and allows you to experience personal revival. So listen, guys, um, the main thing I want you to get from this video is, listen, if you want to go to a worship experience and you want to try to experience revival, that's great. But just know that you don't have to wait in order for a church to hold a revival, quote unquote, service or special encounter with God's service because the God who created you and loves you and saves you and sanctifies you and protects you and provides for you is always willing to meet with you so that you can experience personal revival at any time moment. So I would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts on revival? What are your thoughts on the Asbury revival? Let me know in the comment section below and let's talk about it. Hey, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.